something that comes from heaven and it comes from God. Amen. And revival is something that only God can bring to us. And so when when there's a unity amongst God's people, when there is something, and usually when something is threatening the church, when there's outside forces that are trying to come in and raise havoc against the church is when you find the unity of the saints that will come back together and strengthen. And this is why in the book of Acts, under extreme persecution, the church was born. And under that persecution, there was a constant spreading out of the church. It's kind of like in the family of birds where you have uh, an eagle and you have a baby eagle in the nest. Comfortable, warm, kind of like me on an easy chair <laughs> on a Sunday, you know, not wanting to do anything, right? Just relax. But that comfort, that place in the in the in the in the nest that's comfortable. And something happens that totally changes that little eagle's life. The very parents that were so caring and nurturing all of a sudden do something very strange and odd. They swoop down on the on the nest and they scare the living daylights out of that little eagle and terrorize that little eagle to get him out of the nest. And start to exercise his wings and learn how to fly. It has to happen. But to the little eagle that doesn't understand what's happening, he's forced to go outside of that comfort zone and begin to spread his wings. And all of a sudden he realizes, wow, I can fly. Wow, I can fly, and I can fly pretty high, and I can fly pretty good. And, and all of a sudden that little eagle that was so accustomed to the nest, that was so accustomed to that place where he is, you know, just so comfortable. His comfort is jarred. But in the process, he gains strength. And his wings begin to flap. And his wings begin to move. And pretty soon, he's flying. Now, God used this analogy with Israel. When Moses was at the end of his life, at the end of his ministry, he was getting ready to go into glory. He prophesied. And God said to Israel, I am stirring your nest. I'm stirring you like the eagle. Why was God stirring Israel like an eagle? Because he wanted them to get out of that comfortable place. Amen. That they had gotten into. It was a comfortable place. that they had they had gotten into because of of just growing cold growing kind of lethargic and so he does so, he does he does that amazing thing where he stirs their nest
Deuteronomy 32.11 Like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them aloft. The carrying of the eagle out of the nest was to promote strength was to promote the 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 strength and and to and to get the eagle baby eagles out there flying now god looking at his people and seeing they'd been ca- callous towards his word they'd grown lethargic and indifferent towards god He wanted to bring them into the land of of flows with milk and honey. He wanted to bring them into the abundance. But they were not moving with God. They weren't moving. Much like the church today that has not moved its feet. It hasn't moved itself into the wind. Of the Holy Spirit, so God can bless. It hasn't moved into the abundance of Canaan land, which is tip, typifying the uh, the spirit filled life. A land flowing, God said, with milk and honey. Now, why wouldn't we want to flow into the abundance? Why why would we drag our feet? Well, there's only one reason. Because of sin. Because of a desire for sin. Because we don't want to leave the nest. We don't want to leave our comfort zone. Amen. We don't want to leave that comfortable place that we're in. Sometimes, you know, you get to a point, especially when you get older. (laughs) Your body doesn't want to function like it used to. Your 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 energy level goes down. And I mean, sometimes it's hard to do anything. And the Lord is speaking and saying he wants you to do this and that. And you're like, okay, God, if I could just muster up enough energy to do it. Amen. If I could just get enough energy, God, if I could just get enough of the spirit, then I would be able to do all that you want me to do. And God says to us, you know what? I never said that I was going to leave you or forsake you. I never said I was going to have you do this on your own. Isaiah 40, verse 28 have you not known have you not heard the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary his understanding is unsearchable he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases their strength even the youth shall faint and be weary the young man shall utterly fail but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. See, I'm reminded that God never called us to do this thing in the flesh. He never called us to serve him one day in the flesh. It's not by might. It's not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. That's a promise from God that in the time of of trouble, in the time of weariness, that God would bring a strength, a divine anointing from heaven, that he would send showers of blessing, that he would send a revival, that he would send a renewing to the people of God so that they would be able to rise up and do all that he has called them to do. And right now we are like a we're like a people that are in a weary land. Weariness has come upon us. There's so many Christians that are weary, 
weary to do anything. They're weary to leave their house. They're weary to try to witness. They're weary to go out and share Jesus with people. They're afraid. They're afraid that if they go out and share Christ, they're going to catch the corona or they're afraid if they go out and share Christ that they're going to get rejected or whatever the story may be. But I'm here to tell you tonight, God never called us to do this in our own might. He never called us to serve him one day in our own power. He said, I will give you the strength. I will renew your strength like the eagle. I will revive you. I will revive you. But here's the key. He's going to zoom on your nest. <laughs> He's going to stir your nest. Have you been stirred lately? Have you been stirred? Have you felt something coming down upon your heart and your life and you feel like, God, I just can't seem to get enough of the Holy Spirit. I just can't seem to get enough of you. Even though I'm praying, even though I'm reading and I'm doing all that I should, I still don't feel like I'm, I'm there yet. I still don't feel like it. that's the stirring of the Lord. That's that thing inside of you that's saying, reach out to God. When we're stirred, we are not content. We're not satisfied. We're not complacent. You feel like you've not arrived. You feel like you're not there. You feel frustrated sometimes. You feel like, God, I'm just not doing enough. I just don't have enough of the spirit. I just don't have enough of the anointing. I said that today. I'm walking in the field. I'm praying and I'm saying, God. I don't even have enough energy at times to get up and do these studies. I don't have enough energy to do anything. And God, and God didn't respond to me. And then tonight he did. He said, read Isaiah 40. And I did. And he said, I'm renewing you like the eagle. That's what revival is, church. It's a revival of the spirit of God working through us. There's things that God wants to accomplish. I've been saying it for years, and now all of a sudden we're starting to see it mount up on this country. Christians all over the body of Christ are being stirred. The nest are being stirred. People are being stirred up in their life. And at first it seems like it's a terrible thing. To have your life, everything turned upside down in the nest. And wonder why, God, are you allowing these things to happen to me? Why are you allowing my life to be turned upside down? Why are you causing me to have such trouble in my life, God? Why is this happening? And God says, I'm stirring your nest. Now, I imagine the little eagle, the first time that he sees his, his adoring parents swoop down on the nest. And the little face of that eagle, ah, what are you doing to me? And they push him out of the nest. And they grab onto his wings by their mouth and they carry him through the clouds. And all of a sudden, they let him go. And that little eagle begins to stretch his wings and realizes, I can fly, man. I can fly. God's like, that's what I'm saying to you. I got to get you out of your comfort zone. I got to get you out of that bubble. Because you'll die in that bubble. You'll die in that comfort zone. You'll die in that nest if you don't get out and spread the wings. And that's what's happened to the church. It hasn't exercised the faith. It hasn't shared the gospel. It's kept it to itself for so long that it's, that it's dead. Dead. And Jesus is stirring those that still have life, those that still remain and are hanging on. He's stirring right now and there those christians that are hearing the holy spirit are praying like they've never prayed 
They're fasting. They're getting filled with the Holy Spirit. They're speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. They're going out and they're singing and and they're praising God in the in the places where people are are protesting and where where things have gone on and and violence has gone on. They're going out and they're sharing Jesus. They're being baptized in the Pacific Ocean by the thousands. They're coming to Christ in Tennessee by the thousands. There's a move of the spirit. God is stirring the nest of his church. The stretching. The stretching. Getting us out there in places we've never gone. Getting our feet wet. And walking with Christ on the water. Places that we've never gone. Places that we've never gone. Because we have never been been shaken like we are being shaken right now. And God says it's just the beginning. He says, I'm going to shake everything. I'm going to shake heaven and earth. I'm going to shake my kingdom. I'm going to shake my church. What is that shaking? What is it? They would take the, they would take the wheat. And they would put it inside of a large apparatus that would shake up all of the wheat. And then the wind would come and it would blow on that. And the shaft, that which was not usable, that which was unnecessary, that which was was corruptible, would blow Away, and that which remained was the pure holy wheat. And God's shaking up everything that can be shaken, he said. That which can't be shaken will remain. That's the pure wheat. That's the righteousness of Christ. That's the grace of God. That's everything that is of the Holy Spirit right now. Everything else is going to go and be shaken. And God's going to shake his kingdom. He's going to shake up your life. He's going to shake up my life. And whatever isn't of God, is he's going to blow it away. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to be shaken? Are you ready to be stirred? Are you ready? Because that's what's coming. And if we want to be a part of the revival that God's going to bring to this, this planet, which he is, then you have to set your life aside. And say, God, I want to be shaken. Amen. I want to be shaken. I want everything in my life to glorify Jesus Christ. And it goes deeper than politics. It goes deeper than who's going to be president in a few weeks. It's a spiritual issue. It's, it's a revival issue. And I said it Friday night in prayer and under the inspiration, I believe, of God's spirit. This revival is a preparation of the bride. He's getting the bride ready. He's purifying his bride. He's getting all of the sin all of the impurities out of the church because he's coming. The bridegroom cometh and he's going to receive his church, his bride. Adorned for him. Hallelujah. Adorned for him, the bride. And everything that's impure, everything that's not right, he's going to shake it. 
So there's going to be a, a sanctification, a fire. A baptism of fire of the Holy Spirit. A cleansing fire. But then at the same time, when the church begins to feel the effects of the shaking, and, it, and we will feel it. This revival is a river. Ezekiel saw it coming out of the throne of God, coming out of the altar, a river that would stretch out and its waters would be healing for the nations. Waters to swim in, waters of, of, of the Holy Spirit revival that's going to flow out of the temple into the streets. This revival is going to be outside of the four walls of the church. You're going to see people all over outside worshiping, praising God. This is going to be a revival that is going to hit America like a tidal wave. It's going to come and it's going to sweep over churches, but yet it's going to pass by churches. It's not going to be big name evangelists and, and big mega churches. It's going to be Christians everywhere that love Jesus Christ. And it's going to cause us to, to change the way that we have been doing things. We're going to change. We're going to fly. We're going to spread our wings like the eagle. We're going to walk out on the water. There's going to be signs and wonders. Unlike anything that has ever, ever been seen. Yes, ever. This is the last days. This is revival that we see in Revelation even where he talks about the everlasting gospel being preached. That angel is a word in the Greek means messenger. So messengers that are filled with the spirit are going to be preaching this gospel all over the world. And then the end shall come. This is the revival. This is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said would be in the last days. In the last days, I will pour my spirit out, saith God, on all flesh, on my sons and daughters and handmaidens and servants. They shall prophesy, dream dreams, see visions. This is the time. This is the hour. Yes, it's been happening, but now it's happening at a greater degree than it ever will. And we haven't even begun to see it yet. There's already a move of God, but it's just the beginning. I'm believing God. So if tonight your, your strength is weak, if you're fainting, if you're weary, if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like I just don't think I have what it takes, I'm tired of the battle. I'm tired of all the things that are going on in the world. I'm tired of it all. If you're if you're in that place, well, welcome. Welcome. Because you're a part of the generation that's going to see a mighty sweeping of God's Holy Spirit. You're going to see God move on your life and you're going to feel revival in you. We were sharing, a, what was it? What was I sharing? Oh, we were listening to Keith Green on Friday night. I was playing a bunch of live, some of his live concerts, some of his speeches that he made. And while we were listening to it, the Lord spoke something to me about witnessing and sharing him. And he just said to me in such a clear way, the reason that, you don't witness like you used to. It's because it's no longer shiny and new. I'm no longer shiny and new like I used to be to you. You've allowed yourself to get hard. You've allowed yourself to become weary and, and, and anxiety and stress and all the things of the world that comes upon us as Christians. He said, that's why you don't witness as readily as you used to. And, and it really hit me. It hit me and it broke me. It broke me. But God said something. He said, that's why I'm sending a revival. So that my people will once again relish in me. 
that my people will once again want to know me and share me with everyone they know, that this revival will be a, you know, an evangelism revival. It's going to sweep out into the streets and sinners are going to be slain under the power of God and get saved. There's going to be miracles, signs and wonders, healings, deliverances, demons cast out. You, you know what happened in Samaria under Philip, the evangelist in Acts 8. The whole city came out to hear the word of God. This is the kind of revival we're going to see. America is going to have a national revival at least one more time. And it'll be broadcast on CNN, Fox, everywhere. Everybody will know about it. This is going to be a national move of God, but there will be no face. God showed me this a couple of years ago. No face behind this revival. Every revival in history has had a face. You had Evan Roberts, John Wesley, George Whitfield, Charles Finney, Billy Graham. But guess what? It's Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. That's what people are going to be talking about. They're not going to be talking about a church. They're not going to be talking about a denomination. Do you see what Jesus did? Do you see what the Holy Spirit's doing? Yes. God, do it. Send a revival and send it on us. I believe young people are going to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit and they're going to be mightily used in this revival. Even youth shall faint and be weary. Even the young people. But God is going to revive us. He's going to give us an infusion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when he does, we're going to take this gospel to the ends of the earth with an unction that we've never seen. My 
so rest in your embrace. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without hold. Let me walk on the waters wherever you would call me and take me deeper than my could ever wander, my best will be there. Oh. Hallelujah, Lord. God, tonight we just lift up our hearts to you and we ask you, Father, that you will help us to be revived in this hour, that you will stir us like the eagle that you will revive us lord that you will give us strength in our hearts to serve you lord that you will renew our strength again that you will revive our soul in the time of trouble that you will lord revive your people in the midst of days that you will send an outpouring of the holy spirit on america god that you will stir the church stir the nest we pray oh god tonight stir the nest probe our hearts lord search us try us to see if there be any wicked way in us and take away the wicked way lord and put in us the truth of your word oh god break us break us that we might be broken and then fix us that we might be whole put us on the potter's wheel tonight lord so that everything in us that isn't right would be cleansed and purified. We ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that you will let a revival start in us tonight. As we go out, Lord, as we go out into the byways and the highways, let the Holy Spirit be upon us. Let the Holy Spirit be upon us, that we would have the Word of God, Lord, prophesying through our hearts to share Jesus with every person that doesn't know your name. We pray for many to come into thy kingdom, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, open up the sight that many that are here, that know we're here, they're curious, they want to know. Lord, draw them in, that they might hear and receive and be saved. Be with all of our friends, Lord, that are not here. Let the Holy Spirit bring our group back together, Lord, that we might be a group that is ready to go forth on this internet and shine the everlasting light of Christ. Amen. Anybody got a prayer request before we leave? Or if I think it's just you and I here, isn't it, Hannah? You got a prayer request, Hannah? If anybody else is listening to this message, whether it be after we archive it, and you have prayer, you can always reach us at jesuscast.net. And we'll be glad to take your prayer request. Especially if you want to know Jesus. This little Let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Father God, thank you for Hannah and, and, and Jordan, for them reaching out to these kids. Lord, bless them, Father. And this one boy that needs Christ, let the Holy Spirit move in his heart. 
that he will reach, ask Jesus into his life. And Father God, every work they do there, let it count for the glory of God. Let the anointing be upon their lives. Touch them, Lord, fresh anointing, a fresh breath of heaven on them, Lord, tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. God, just pour out the Spirit upon their ministry, upon their life. Give them all they need financially, all that heaven can bring down. In Jesus' name, amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. Shine it all over the world for Jesus. Shine it all over the world for Jesus. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let it shine. Not gonna let the devil put it out. I'm gonna let it shine. No, I'm not gonna let him put it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. The souls are coming to the cross. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, there's a call comes ringing. Oh, the restless wave sends the light. In the light, there are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Blessed gospel light, let it shine. Evermore, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine. Evermore, let a mass of don't fall. Oh, send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine evermore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. Let a Christ like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, 
in the light Let a golden offering At the cross we lay Sin the light Sin the light Sin the light The blessed gospel Let it Send the light, send the gospel light. Lord, let it shine, let it shine through us. Hallelujah. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine every day, Lord. That gospel light, let it shine. Let it hit shine. Father, we just thank you tonight. Let the Holy Spirit move in a mighty way upon us. Bring us into a new place with you, God, a new place where the Holy Spirit is moving, where revival power is flowing. God, that we would see signs and wonders in our own homes, in our own lives, that we would see revival, God. Lord, bring us into a, a fire of revival where we are just burning with the Holy Ghost, just on fire, Lord, for you, that we would go out, Lord, and spread the good news everywhere we go, that the Holy Spirit would move in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to I'm going to close tonight with this. Just keep praying, keep seeking God and keep coming back because we're going to see more and more of God in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. We'll see you. Remember to keep Caleb and his family in your prayers and we'll see you uh, Wednesday night, 9 p.m. for more of this. God is good. I love this. I love the, to be with God's people, feel the Holy Spirit, feel God's presence. And I'll see you later, Hannah. Tell Jordan I said, hey, and um, we'll, hopefully we'll get more and more of our people coming back and consistency again and see the Spirit move. Amen. God bless.